All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another video. Last, uh, last video, we left off here with Mr. Dooch himself, uh, Mussolini. And now we are showing a map showing the German advances in the battle for the French capital from June 5th to 17th, 1940. Now this map, obviously, it's very hard to read, even if I zoom out a little bit here for you. But there's Paris. There's Germany. We're just getting some. Um, there's Switzerland right here. Le Port de I don't know. I'm not. My French is obviously not very good. Paris is probably the best thing I can say, and even that's not really great. But yeah, it's interesting to see this map. I can't read it very well, but I'm sure if it was in color and uh, not on two pages. It would be a lot easier to read for me. All right, well, let's get down to actual text so we can actually read what it says. The drive on Paris. A slight relaxation of the enemy pressure on the first days of June was followed on the uh, 5th by an advance over the uh, Islet Canal. Um, on the 9th, the Germans occupied Soissons. Okay, France. So you got to fix some of these names, man. I can't pronounce this crap. <laughs> By June 11th, the battle for the capital was at its peak. The enemy had reached the sign and were attempting the crossing under a smokescreen. While further east, assailant was formed near Chateau Thierry in an attempt to encircle the capital. On the 14th, Paris fell, the Allies falling back in an attempt to reform their line to the south. On the 15th, the sign was crossed east of Paris near Nomaly, or Romilly, my bad, a German advance guard reached uh, Chamont, pressed on towards Dijon, and entered Verdun on the same day. On the 16th, France asked for an armistice, but the advance continued until the 22nd. The arrows showed the direction of the main thrusts. So let's see if we can find some of those arrows. Here's one. There's one there. We have a bunch of them going south. Here we see the clear progression. This goes here. Some of it goes here. But they go down here. Here. Basically encircling the capital. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how fast Paris falls here. Um, the Germans rapidly moved through and overwhelmed the French defense. Uh, not just the French, but the Allied defense. Um, and Paris falls very quickly, which is very unfortunate. Paris occupied June 14th, 1940. The no-no Germans enter Paris. A German heavy motorized unit passing the obelisk. It's this is all it says. This this page is kind of said. This almost looks like blood dripping from this too, which I don't know if that's an accident. Probably is, but makes it all look all the more depressing. The swastika flies over the French capital. June 14th, 1940. Paris in Nono-German occupation. As the Germans took over Paris from the French civil officers, the swastika flag was unfurled on the city's principal buildings. Along, among them, the Eiffel Tower, the Hotel de Ville, Ville, I don't know, Ville, Villa, Hotel de Villa, the, uh, Hotel Creon, Creon, I'm guessing, where German staff established its headquarters, and bitterest of all, the Arc de Triomphe, Triomphe, uh, beneath which lies the tomb of France's unknown soldier of 1918. The picture shows above German officers accompanied by a French civil official looking out over Paris from the top of the Arc de Triomphe. Um, the swastika flag flying before them. Below, crowds watching a German animal transport column passing a saluting point 
in the neighborhood of the Arc de Triomphe. So here we see those German men. Um, YouTube censors. Good thing this man was here. <laughs> and here we see those French soldiers. Yeah, that's the doing it on the Arc was kind of petty. Um. The First World War was a sad war for all those involved, including the ones who died, obviously. Um, so while, yes, you can be triumphant in your um, taking of the enemy, it is in bad taste to do it on the graves of those who fought before. Because it is not fair to those who fought before to be desecrated like that. Obviously, the no-no Germans did not care, but still, you'd have thought they had some honor left. A new BEF leaves for France, June 15th, 1940. More British troops to France's aid. When the German onslaught on Paris was at its height, uh, Mr. Churchill promised that all possible help would be sent to support France. On June 15th, a reconstructed BEF was ready to sail. Among it, men who, but a fortnight before, had escaped from Dunkirk. But, with the collapse of France, many a transport, like that seen above, departing from an English port, its deck crowded with Canadians, was recalled when only a few miles from the British shores. They were ready to help France at, when they could, but it was too late at that point. U.S. citizens were called from Britain, June 5th, 15th, 1940. Bound for America. Events in the law, low countries, and France, and, expect, and the expected Brits League of Britain, uh, caused the American government to urge its nationals to leave the island at once. On June 15th, the U.S. liner Washington, above with tender for ground, bringing passengers from shore, sailed for Galloway with about 2,000 U.S. citizens. On its voyage, the ship was stopped by a submarine, and passengers ordered the boats, but after identification, the ship was allowed to proceed unharmed. Yeah, they would stop ships um, because they would, they would obviously they were going to blow it up, but um, uh, the Germans prob they did not want to upset the American government at this point because America is not really like a big superpower at this point, but it's a sleeping giant as it would later be referred. Um, so while at this time it wasn't that powerful per se, the potential for power is greater than any of the other nations currently fighting. But all right. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you didn't, tell me what I can improve on. Um, I was actually thinking about doing like an old 1920s voice. Um, maybe get the equipment for that. That'd be fun. Um, but yeah. And um, if you can, subscribe. It helps out a ton. Thank you.